Hi, I'm Bernard Klingenberg. In this video, I want to show you how to construct contingency tables. We use contingency tables to study the relationship or association between two categorical variables. I'm going to next show you an example that shows two categorical variables. I got the example from the 2018 General Social Survey. Let me switch over to my screen. What you see here is a data set that just has two categorical variables. The second one, which I just simply termed happy, is the response to the question, in general, how happy are you? Which was asked as one of the questions on the 2018 general social survey. Now, respondents could report as either being very happy, some responded that here, or pretty happy, which these respondents selected, or not too happy, which these respondents selected. The other categorical variable we have here is the sex of the respondent, yeah, if it's just male or female. So we have two categorical variables, and we want to study their association. To do that, we first need to construct the contingency table. Another word, or another, yes, another uh, word for contingency table is a cross classification table, because we're trying to cross classify two categorical variables. Let's do this using an app because we don't want to count manually the different uh, counts of respondents following in each possible combination of sex and happiness. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all the data, which, which is about 200 observations, and those are the respondents of all the 18 to 25 year olds in the 2018 general social survey. And so you can think of this as a sample representative of the 18 to 25 year old population in the United States. I'm going to copy these uh, data. And now I'm going to switch over to a website, to my website called artofstat.com, which is this website right here. Uh, go to artofstat.com, then click on web apps, either down here or up here. We're going to use the very first web app, Explore Categorical Data. And if you're subscribing to this YouTube channel, I did a video on this app to construct simple bar charts before. But now we don't have a single categorical variable. We have two categorical variables. So let's select the two categorical variable option up here. This brings up this, comp this, this menu right here with a couple of data sets pre-implemented. But we actually have data on individual observations. So I'm going to check individual observations from this drop-down menu. I'm going to punch in. I'm going to uh, select the first variable name, which is six and then the second one, which was the happiness of the respondents. And now I have labels for the two categorical variables. And now just clicking on the first cell and pasting in, you don't see this, but on my keyboard, I'm pressing Control D and pasting in the observations that I uh, copied over from the Excel spreadsheet. So you can check that all the observations are here. And now once you're done, you can press Submit. If you have a small data set, you can actually manually enter your data here as well. But copy and pasting works pretty well. Submit the data set, and then we get a couple of outputs. I want to first focus on the very first one because this actually shows the contingency table. A contingency table shows the distribution of two categorical variables. We have the sex variable here with categories female and male, cross classified with the happiness variable with categories not too happy, pretty happy, and very happy. I'm going to actually, or this app shows totals for the columns and the rows, but if you don't like this, you can switch this off to get a contingency table. Now, I do like to include the totals because the very first cell I'm looking at is this one over here, which tells me about the total sample size. For our survey, we have a sample of 197 18 to 25 year olds, which comes from the general social survey. Of those 197, 102 were female, 95 were male, and of those 197, 36 said they're not too happy, 122 said they're pretty happy, and 39 were very happy. The contingency table itself tells you about how often each combination of categories of the two variables appear. The 16 here in this very first cell tells you that 16 of the respondents were female and not too happy. 
the 63 here in this cell tells you that 63 respondents were male and pretty happy. We can convert those counts to relative frequencies by dividing each count by the total number of respondents. This is often referred to as the joint distribution, which is an option here in the app. The 0.081 disproportion was simply obtained by taking 16 and dividing it by 197. It tells us that a proportion of 0.81 or 8.1% of all respondents were female and not too happy. Whereas if you look at this cell, the 0.32 tells us that 32% of all respondents were male and pretty happy. However, if you want to compare males and females in terms of happiness, these joint distribution, these joint proportions are not that useful. Instead, we want to compute what is called the conditional proportions or the conditional distribution. You get the conditional distribution by looking at each row separately. Of all the females, and there are 102 of them, how many of them were not happy, pretty happy, or very happy? To obtain this conditional distribution of happiness, given sex, given female, I simply take 16 and divide it not by the total, but instead by the total number of females. 16 out of 102 females were not too happy. 16 out of 102 equals 0.157. This tells me that a proportion of 0.157 or 15.7% of female respondents were not too happy. 57.8% of female respondents were pretty happy and the remaining 26.5% of female respondents were very happy. For this conditional distribution of happiness, given the student, or sorry, the, not the student, the respondent identified as female, they add up to 100%, which you see up here. I'm doing the same thing for, to obtain the conditional distribution of happiness, given the, res, given the respondent was male. I'm dividing 20 by 95, and then 63 by 95 and 12 by 95. And you see the result down here. So this would be termed the conditional distribution of happiness given the respondent was a male. We see that 21.1% of males were not happy, 66% of males were pretty happy, and the remaining 12.6% of males were very happy. The side-by-side -side bar chart plots these conditional proportions. We have basically two bar charts, one for females and one for males. We see the conditional proportions for females here. This corresponds to the first row here, roughly 16%, 58% rounded, and 26% uh, corresponding to the proportion of females who are not too happy, pretty happy, and very happy. And then the same for the males. You can now compare the proportion of being not happy for females versus male. You see the male bar is slightly higher. That's because 15.7% of females um, were not too happy compared to 21% of males, slightly higher. The green bars, you see a slightly higher bar for the males. That's because, which you can read off in this table here as well, 66% of males were happy compared to a slightly lower percentage of 57.8% of females. On the flip side, females tended to be more often very happy. In particular, 26.5% of females were very happy compared to only 12.6% of males. So this showed you how to use the conditional distribution and the conditional proportions of happiness given sex in the bar chart. Now, I encourage you to play around with this app. There are other distributions, such as the marginal distribution. The marginal distribution is interesting because it only refers to the distribution of a single variable. It really refers to, as the name say, says, says, the margin of the table. So for instance, the marginal distribution of sex, all it tells us is that 51% of respondents were female, the rest, 48% were male. 
or if I take the marginal distribution by columns, I learned that overall, collapsing as we say over six, overall 18% were not too happy, 62% were pretty happy, and the rest, roughly 20%, were very happy. All these, both the conditional distribution and the marginal distribution, are easy obtained from the contingency table up here. I encourage you to play around with different data sets. Some are pre-implemented here. Uh, and this video showed you how to construct the contingency table, how to obtain the conditional and marginal distributions, and how to interpret the conditional proportions. Thank you.